ओम ज्ञान तिरंदज्ञानंजन शलाखया चक्षुर उन्मिल तस्म श्री गुरव नम नमो विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सरस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषाशून्यवादी पाश्चातिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे सो हियर दिस चैप्टर इज एंटाइटल्ड एज फंडामेंटल प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ मटीरियल नेचर what are the different principles which are active in this material world how this material world is created what are the three modes of material nature how the living entity becomes entangled in these three modes of material nature are all being described one after another very analytically by lord kapila before this in 25th chapter lord kapila gave preliminary understanding of sankhya now <clears throat> lord kapila is giving analytical knowledge of sankhya so preliminary knowledge and then analytical knowledge in the vedic literatures it is said there are five stages of knowledge one is called pratyaksha pratyaksha means <clears throat> the knowledge which one acquires with his material senses the mind the other senses and the intelligence whatever we see in this material world and we try to gain and acquire knowledge with direct perception is called pratyaksha beyond this is called paroksha so pratyaksha gyana we all know it has lot of limitations because with our limited senses mind and intelligence we cannot understand even this material world even this material nature which is so vast so there is no question that one can understand spiritual knowledge with this that is not possible so beyond this is the knowledge called paroksha gyana paroksha gyana means when one understands the futility of depending on knowledge acquired from material senses mind and intelligence and he takes to the process of disciplic succession hearing from the authorities is called paroksha gyan when one hears from the authorities and tries to understand the absolute truth that is called paroksha gyan like say here 
we are hearing from Lord Kapila. Mother Devaguti is hearing from Lord Kapila, who is an authority. Right? So this is called Parokshya. Next stage is called <coughs> Aparoksha. When one from theoretical knowledge, just like all of us are also hearing in parampara, okay? I am not this material body, I am spirit soul, we should not be very much attached to this material body. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is the only enjoyer. We are His servant. But, and we are trying to act on that platform, but it is very difficult at the present moment because we don't have realized knowledge. We still try to enjoy. Even after knowing Krishna is the enjoyer, we are attached to this material body. Even after understanding, this material body is not me. Isn't it? So, when one has sufficiently heard from the authorities and followed the instructions to become self-realized, then one comes to the point of aparokshya. That means he becomes liberated from three modes of material nature. And that is what Lord Kapila is talking about in today's words. He is saying, now I am going to give you knowledge, analytical knowledge about tattva, about absolute truth. Knowing which you will become freed from three modes of material nature. Viditva vimuchyate purushaha prakartai gune. Viditva means after knowing which, after understanding this knowledge, vimuchyate, you will become free. Purushaha, anyone who understands this knowledge, he will become freed from prakartai gune from the three modes of influence of three modes of material nature. Adhate sampravakshyami Now, my dear mother, I am going to speak this knowledge. Tattvanam lakshanam prathar That there are many categories of understanding the absolute truth. Many categories. Just like the Mayavadi's understanding is there is only one category. Aham Brahma asks me, everything is Brahman. There is not only one category. Just like we say, Pancha Tattva, the absolute truth in five different forms. Pancha Tattva. There is a Supreme Personality of God. There is incarnation of the Supreme Lord. There is devotee of the Supreme Lord. So many tattvas are there. There is external energy of the Supreme Lord. There is jiva tattva. So many categories of understanding the absolute truth is there. So that is why Prabhupada in the very beginning of this purport is explaining this. Prabhupada is saying, As explained in Chaitanya Charitamrita, to understand Krishna means to understand Krishna in his personal form. So, what does it mean? Tattva Gyan, to understand the absolute truth, what does it mean? Chaitanya Charitamrita explains. So, first of all, Prabhupada says there is no other mean to understand tattva apart from bhakti. Where does Krishna say Bhagavad Gita? Bhaktyama abhijanati yavan yas chasmi tattvataha. 
if one wants to understand krishna in truth the absolute truth if one wants to understand then it is possible only through devotional service then in bhagavatam krishna says the object of the devotional service is krishna through devotional service it's not that i have to achieve something else we have to achieve that absolute truth krishna and chaitanya charitamrita describes it further <clears throat> what does it mean to understand krishna in truth this is very very important what does it mean this line when we say king king does not mean alone king means his kingdom his subject everything that is the meaning of understanding the king similarly when we say we have to understand the absolute truth what does it mean number 1 prabhu says to understand his personal that in the ultimate understanding krishna is a person transcendental person then to understand krishna in his personal form with his internal energy his external energy his expansions and his incarnations <clears throat> so jeevas are also his expansion we are vibhinna amsha and there are swamsha different kinds of expansions of the lord are there and uh, this like <clears throat> the different tatvas are described in chaitanya charitamrita the swamsha are called vishnu tatva and vibhinna amsha they are called as jeeva tatva and there is something intermediate also between swamsha or vishnu tatva and jeeva tatva there is shiva tatva also he is neither a jeeva nor is he fully the supreme personality of god this like brahma is jeeva tatva and whenever there is no uh, you know proper living entity available to occupy that post the supreme lord himself takes that post of brahma whereas no living entity can become shiva shiva tatva is completely different it is transformation of the supreme lord for a particular purpose it's a transformation of the supreme lord for a particular purpose this material world is different this material world is transformation of the energies of the lord shiva tatva is transformation of the supreme lord for a particular purpose so that is a different kind of expansion of the lord so what does it mean when we understand the absolute truth all these different categories we have to understand and that is called understanding the absolute truth so <clears throat> prabhupada is explaining what is the sankhya philosophy actually <clears throat> people who are too much attached to material conception of life and they are not freed from the three modes of material nature who are conditioned by three modes of material nature for them sankhya is prescribed you see 
so we were seeing sankhya is an analytical knowledge about the absolute truth so pratyaksha is material knowledge that has nothing to do with sankhya analyzing this material world trying to understand this material world with our senses that is not actually the part of sankhya that is just material knowledge sankhya starts with paroksha gyana hearing in parampara from the authorities and then when one tries to act on that platform then one may reach aparoksha gyana one becomes liberated from influence of three modes of material nature he becomes self realized brahma bhuta one comes to the platform of brahman and at that stage one becomes eligible to perform devotional service mad bhakti labate param on the stage of brahma bhuta <clears throat> one becomes eligible to attain devotional service so after aparoksha gyana is the platform of devotional service but in that also there are categories beginning with adoksha jagyana adoksha jagyana means understanding that the supreme personality of godhead has a form he has name he has gunas but i cannot understand them with my these limited senses adhokrat gyanam iti adoksha jaya the supreme personality of god it cannot be understood by this limited knowledge of the senses that is called adoksha jaya so this stage of adoksha jagyana is also compared to the stage of vidhi bhakti where one has understanding about the supreme lord and he is trying to serve the supreme lord with rules and regulations regulatory devotional service niyama bhakti that is called as adoksha jagyana and when one understands the supreme personality of godhead completely being purified and he is engaged in one of the different rasas in raga in attachment to the supreme lord that is called as aprakrta gya so these are the five stages of knowledge pratyaksha sumano can you tell the five pratyaksha then paroksha yes mari sir next a paroksha anant rupa next adhokshaja then aprakrta garuda gaja will explain what are this five in short who would like to tell ram gopal bhai ragotam one one line so in one one line prakarta is material knowledge acquired with senses there is no possibility of understanding absolute truth at this platform next is paroksha gyan when one gives up this process of trying to understand absolute truth with his limited senses and mind 
and he takes to hearing from authorities. That is called as Paroksha Gyan. Aparoksha means when one becomes self-realized. Following those instructions, he becomes free from the influence of three modes of material nature. Brahma Bhuta, he comes to the platform of Brahman. And from there, Bhakti begins. So, next stage is called Adhokshaja. When one understands the Supreme Lord as personality and tries to engage with rules and regulation in his service, that is called Adhokshaja Gyan. And finally, when one becomes completely engaged in attachment with the Supreme Lord in one of the different rasas, which is meant for Paramahamsas, that is called Apakartya Gyan, or it is also called Vasudev platform. Completely purified from any material tinge, completely engaged in devotional service of the Lord. So, Sankhya philosophy brings us to the point of Aprakarta Gyan, from where one can begin devotional service. From that point, one can begin devotional service. If you all remember in Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada says so. Prabhupada says, just like if you take the example, what is Sankhya? If there is a tree, Sankhya means to analyze and understand what is the tree. And Bhakti is further progress. After understanding what is the tree, when you start watering the root of the tree, taking care of the tree, that is called Bhakti. So Sankhya is a part of Bhakti. It's a preliminary knowledge. Bhakti is the end of that knowledge. Raja Vidya, Raja Uhyam, Pavitra Hetutama. That is called end of the knowledge. So, today I thought it is also a very auspicious day of Shivaratri, appearance of Lord Shiva. And uh, he is uh, one of the greatest devotees of the Lord. Vaishnavana Yatha So, there are verses recited by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as an Ashtakam glorifying Lord Shiva. This happened in Ekamraka village which is near Bhuvneshwar and described by Murari Gupta. So that book is called as Shri Chaitanya Charita Mahakavya, written by Murari Gupta. There he quotes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu reciting these eight verses in glorifying Lord Shiva. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to that village and when he saw the flag on the top of Lord Shiva's temple, he went into ecstasy and fell down on the ground and after he got up he entered the temple and he was very very eager to meet Lord Shiva and then in loving ecstasies he recited these eight prayers glorifying Lord Shiva so just read that <coughs> Namo Namaste Tri Dasheshwaraya Bhutadinathaya Mridaya Nityam Ganga Tarango Thita Balachandra Chudaya Gauri Nayanot Savaya. I repeatedly offer my obeisances unto you. Namo Namaste. Tri Dasheshwaraya, the controller of thirty primal demigods. Bhutadinathaya, unto you the original father of created beings. Actually, Supreme Lord is not in touch with the material world. It is in the form of Lord Shiva 
he is in touch with the material world. The Supreme Lord is in touch with the material world through expansion of Lord Shiva. So that is why he is called Bhuta Dinathaya. He is our father, material father. And this material nature is our mother, which brings us forth in this material world. <clears throat> the original father of all created being unto you, whose character is gracious, Vridayanitya, unto you whose head is crested by the sickle moon, arisen from the waves of Ganga, and unto you who are a festival for the eyes of the fair goddess Gauri. So it will take time if I have to read all the verses. I just read the translations. <clears throat> I offer my obeisances, this is the second prayer, unto you who are dressed in garments resembling molten gold, the moon, blue lotuses, coral and dark rain clouds, unto you who bestows the most desirable boons on your devotees by means of your delightful dancing, unto you who are the master of impersonalism and unto you whose flag bears the image of the bull. Is the second number. Third, <clears throat> I offer my obeisances unto you who dispels darkness with your three eyes, the moon, the sun and the fire. Unto you who causes auspiciousness for all the living entities, Shiva, the name itself actually is for this, who causes auspiciousness. Who causes auspiciousness for all the living entities of the universe and unto you whose potency easily defeats that of thousands of moons and suns. Next, I offer my obeisances unto you whose form is brilliantly illuminated by the jewels of Ananta, the king of snakes, unto you who are clothed by the tiger skin and thus radiates divine effulgence, unto you who sits upon a thousand petal lotus and unto you whose two arms are adorned by lustrous bangles. Next. I offer my obeisances unto you who brings happiness to your servitors as you pour on them the liquid nectar from your two reddish lotus feet, which ring with charming ankle bells. Obeisances unto you who is adorned with an abundance of gems Please endow me with pure love for Lord Hari. Actually, that is what the devotees pray to Lord Shiva. That just like he is engaged in the service of the Lord, he is engaged in devotional service, the devotee can ask him to endow us with the bhakti of Lord Hari. O Shri Rama, O Govinda, O Mukunda, O Sauri, O Shri Krishna, Narayana, Vasudeva, I offer my obeisances unto you. Lord Shiva, the monarch of intoxicated, be like devotee, maddened by drinking the nectar of these and other holy names of the Lord, obeisances unto you, the destroyer of the grief. See, what is Lord Shiva doing? He is maddened by chanting these varieties of different names of his master. See, how is he? What is he chanting? O Sri Rama, O Govinda, O Mukunda, O Sauri, O Krishna, Narayana, Vasudeva. So, Lord Shiva, the monarch of intoxicated, be like devotees, monarch of intoxicated devotees who are mad in chanting the holy name of the Lord. Maddened by drinking the nectar of these and other holy names of the Lord, obeisance is unto you the destroyer of grief. <clears throat> Next. I offer my obeisances, respectful obeisances again and again unto you, who is forever inquired of confidentiality by Sri Narada and other sages, unto you, who also grants favor to them very quickly, unto you, who bestows the happiness of Hari Bhakti, unto you who creates auspiciousness and unto you who is the Guru of everyone. So Lord Shiva is also one of the Mahajanas, you should understand. Shambhu is also one of the Mahajanas. 
So that is why he is called Guru of everyone. <coughs> Next. I offer my obeisances unto you who are a festival of auspiciousness for the eyes of Goddess Gauri. Unto you who is the monarch of her life breath. Unto you who is capable of bestowing transcendental rasa. And unto you who is expert in forever singing songs of the pastimes of Lord Govinda with great longing. Then, eighth one. A person filled with loving feelings who hears with rapt attention this wonderful eightfold prayers of Lord Shiva can quickly gain Shri Hari Prema as well as transcendental knowledge the realization of that knowledge and unprecedented powers.